you, Kiki readers. In the June-July 2014 issue of Kiki, we make a USB phone charger bracelet that involves cutting up wires and putting them back together. Rewiring something can be quite challenging, so we wanted to go over the wire stripping process with you in case it seemed confusing or intimidating. The more you do something and practice, the better you're going to be. So grab your wire strippers and follow along with this video. So the first thing I did was cut up my charger cord as it explains to do in the USB article. The extra piece that's in between the two ends of the cord because you can use that to practice on a few times until you feel ready to use the actual charger pieces. So I'm going to practice with you with my extra cord. And you're going to have to try different sizes because depending on what kind of charger cord you have. This one I use a 14 size. But so I just kind of pinch around the cord and then you pull the cord away. Do you see that? You pull the cord away from the wire strippers to pull the casing off and, and expose the wires that are on the inside. But if your cord is larger or smaller, you know, that's something you can practice on with that extra bit of cord is figuring out which size to use to strip your wire. So now I'm going to use the smallest size to do the same thing to strip the smaller wires. But the, you have to be so careful with this step because there's little copper hairs inside each wire and you cannot break any of those. You need every single copper wire in order to make a secure connection. So you have to kind of forcefully pull the casing off without ripping a copper wire. So especially with these tiny wires, you may even want to get a magnifying glass that might make it easier for you. But again, I try to perforate the casing a little bit before I pull, so I just kind of pinch around it lightly and then I'll pull, I'll squeeze the wire strippers a little harder and pull the wire away from the wire strippers. So this is what it looks like with the copper hairs exposed. And if you notice, each wire is a different color, and that's also super important. You're going to have to match the correct colors together, and you have to make sure that you're using every single copper thread. So when you feel like you've practiced enough, you can go ahead and move to the pieces, the cord end pieces that it talks about in the article. And it's the same process that you start with taking the casing off of the outside wire and then taking the casing off the inside wires. So here's where it gets tricky. You're going to have to put all of the shrink tubing on the cord before you twist it all together. So you first you need to put a big tube on the big piece of cord that you did not strip. And then you have to put lots of little tubes over the tiny cords. That you're going to slide over the copper wire, the exposed wire, once they're twisted together. Usually the, the shrink tubing size is the same as the hole that you use on your wire strippers. So for example, if you use a size 14 to strip your wire, then the tubing would also be a size 14. So I'm going ahead and putting the tubing on all of my wire pieces before twisting it together. So remember, the most important part is that you get all the copper wires of the matching colored pieces together. You twist it together and you want it to be a tight connection but not so forceful that you would rip a piece of the copper.
So you can go ahead and slide your tubing over the twisted copper once it's fully twisted, but you probably don't want to light it and seal it until you've checked to make sure that the wire connections work. If the charger doesn't work when you plug it in, you can still pull the tubing off and try to twist it again with a tighter connection, but if you've already shrunk the tubing, you can't go back in and fix that, so you would actually have to start from scratch. The other thing to keep in mind is for all the connections that you're making by twisting the wire, you want to try to make them as similar as possible so that the tension's all the same so that you can slide your larger tubing over all four of them because if they're all different tensions then one might be um, farther out, one might be longer than the other and they, it won't all fit together. So this is kind of a long and tedious process, but it's really important that you take your time and focus if you want the connections to work. So I'm going to go ahead and, and shrink the tubing because I tested the connections and they worked fine. It really doesn't take much to shrink it. You really just need to wave the flame over them a little bit and that's all it takes. But make sure that your fingers are completely out of the way of the flame and you don't want to touch the tubing either because the tubing also gets really hot. If you have access to a torch flame, that would be your best option so that you don't have to put your hand anywhere near the fire. You just want to try to shrink it until it is perfectly fitted to the wire that you just twisted. Okay, and then the last step is just to slide a piece of tubing over all the connections you just made just to secure it all in place and just it's a safer option. It'll make it more durable and you want to make sure that the tubing completely covers all the exposed areas. This, uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm leaving some of the wires exposed just so that you can see how tight the tubing can get, but you want to completely cover the open area. It would be better to err on the side of a piece of tubing that's too long than a piece of tubing that's too short. And there you go. So by this point, you should have rewired a cord that is working and will charge your gadget. For how to embellish this and turn this into a fun bracelet, you'll have to check out the 2014 June-July issue of Kiki. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day. The end.